In today's video, we're examining some NHL trade rumors focused on three teams. We're looking at a couple of big names like Malkin and Latang in Pittsburgh. Will they actually get contract extensions or could they move on? We're taking a look at Johnny Gaudreau's future in Calgary and we're looking at the future of Matthias Ekholm and Philip Forsberg in Nashville. Plus, we get news that the Leafs have extended their head coach and we have a ton of players on waivers today as well. A lot more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a ton of news to talk about here today. I want to get started with the news from the NHL waiver wire. Today's actually the first day, now that we're 12 days out of the regular season, for players to be put on waivers for the purpose of being assigned or loaned to another team. Now, we've seen the odd waiver activity here in recent weeks with players' contracts being terminated. So that's a different type of waiver wire, but this is for the purpose of being assigned. So we have a lot of players, and this is going to be uh, a scenario probably in the next week where we see tons of players on waivers as they want to go through to either be assigned to the American Hockey League or they want to be assigned uh, elsewhere if they, if they require waivers. So first up, we've got the Arizona Coyotes putting uh, three players through waivers, including defenseman Cam Deneen and Dyson Mayo. Also forward Hudson Fashing and Blake Spears. So actually, it's four players, not three. Uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets put goaltender Cam Johnson and forward Zach Ronaldo. If you remember, Ronaldo was one of those players that uh, was uh, publicly unvaccinated and made it known by the team here that he was not welcome at the main camp and was going to play uh, only in the American Hockey League. So we're, we still have another day before players can opt out. It'll be interesting to see if he's one of them or if he will play in the AHL um, as they've given him that option. Uh, the Minnesota Wild have put through three players, all forwards, Will Bitten, uh, Dominic Turgeon, and Joseph Cramarosa. We had Callum Booth, goaltender in the Boston Bruins organization. A couple of players in Calgary, including defenseman Colton Pullman and forward Luke Phillip. Also in Colorado, goaltender Hunter Miska. And the Rangers had a bunch of them, including Anthony Botetto, Johnny Brzezinski, Tim Gettinger, Anthony Greco, goaltender Keith Kincaid, and Ty Ronning. And we also had a couple more in Montreal. Uh, we had Louis Belpito and defenseman Xavier Woulette. So all of those players will go through waivers. The uh, time of the waivers is actually different this year. They bumped it back a few hours, so it's going to be later in the afternoon before we get uh, news on the waiver situation every day. Uh, and of course, if all those players clear, they will be eligible to be assigned to another league, most of which will be going to the American Hockey League, or at least going to the AHL for training camp. Some of them could possibly even end up in an East Coast League or somewhere else, depending on where their teams are want to assign them. So that's a lot of players going through waivers here today. Uh, of course, like I said, we also got the news from the Toronto Maple Leafs just shortly before I started recording here that they've extended head coach Sheldon Keefe on a two-year contract extension. Of course, Keefe was entering the final year of his deal. Um, obviously, they feel he's done a pretty good job, except we haven't seen that playoff success, which is the main thing that they're looking for here. Uh, really under Keefe's watch, that's now... Uh, last year, obviously, they had a, a first-round playoff loss. Uh, you know, obviously, I don't have to remind you what happened. The seven-game series against Montreal. And, of course, the year before, uh, in the bubble playoffs, they lost the play-in round against Columbus. Uh, so, clearly, they're, you know, pleased enough to keep him around for a little bit longer. It's a long history with Kyle Dubas as well. Uh, so, he gets two more years. So, he's under contract now for three years in total. I am sure during that time frame for him to remain in that situation uh, and continue on, they're going to have to see more playoff success. But I do think as well that management feel that this is not a coaching issue, why they haven't had the playoff success, that it's really on the players. And this is really, to me, another sign of confidence in him, which puts the onus on the players. This also comes one day ahead of the Amazon docuseries on the Maple Leafs All or Nothing, which goes on Amazon Prime tomorrow. I know there's been some trailers and a few places have had like small little samples of five-minute clips and stuff that they were able to show. Uh, and I know Sheldon Keefe is probably going to be one of the main characters you leave watching that series, uh, feeling like you know a lot more about, especially his coaching style that you see a lot more behind the scenes. I, I know in the previews, it looks like there's certainly some big speed in the room and stuff that you hear me yelling at the players quite a bit. So some interesting timing there from the Leafs organization and as well just a reminder 
of that series going live on Amazon tomorrow. Now, we also had a few other signings here today, uh, including the Columbus Blue Jackets signing J.F. Ruby, another goaltender who gets a one-year, two-way deal. Uh, of course, league minimum at the NHL level. Uh, Ruby likely will take part in the uh, American Hockey League tandem. Uh, obviously, uh, Tarasov and he will likely be the two netminders where you have Corpus Allo and Merslickens at the NHL level. And like I said before, I wouldn't be shocked to see Corpus Allo move sometime this year. Uh, and obviously, that's going to create an, a need. They also have, like I mentioned, another goaltender in Cam Johnson who went through waivers today as well. So uh, certainly a situation where I think we could see some moving parts there uh, this year. Now, we also got news out of Montreal today that the Habs do have approval to go to 100% capacity for the start of the regular season. Of course, they haven't had that here as of yet. It's been quite some time since the Habs have had a full building. Um, obviously, they had very limited capacity in last year's playoffs. And, of course, the year before that, we had the bubble and all that. So, it's, it's been quite some time, a long time coming with most other places across Canada and the U.S. having approval to be able to do that. I know Montreal was one of the few venues that didn't have it. So that's certainly great news for the Habs and their fan base. Uh, also, too, we got word today that Detroit uh, suffered a big blow. Uh, Jakob Verena, who obviously was a little bit late getting to camp, uh, on his first practice got hurt, and they got word today he's going to be out for about a minimum of four months with a shoulder surgery that's going to be required. Uh, that's a significant blow for Detroit and for Verana. He was doing really well after the trade last year with the Capitals, with St. Anthony Mantha to Washington. Um, he was going to be playing a big role for them this year, and I expected a big season from him, to be completely honest. So that's certainly some really terrible news. I mean, from Detroit's perspective, I don't expect him to be a playoff team. I think they're still far away from completing this rebuild, but still, he's a you know a nice player for them that had you know some big aspirations. That happened before the season can even get going is a, certainly a, a big big blow. I wonder how much of an impact that'll have on possibly Bobby Ryan, who's there in a PTO getting another contract with Detroit. He had also had a very solid preseason game as well, uh, scoring a nice goal the other night. So I wonder if that'll kind of lead to Ryan getting signed. We'll have to see. Further, you should know something on that in the next couple of days. So as I mentioned yesterday, I am going to be doing a bit of a giveaway. It's like I said, it's nothing major. It's nothing real huge or anything. Uh, but I do have something that I can give to one viewer that would like to have it. So essentially, how this is going to work is I'm going to need you to leave a comment on this video if you're interested in this prize, I will take everyone who's interested, put it into a draw, and see who gets it, and I'll announce it uh, in a couple of days. So essentially, uh, what I have to give away is a three-month subscription to The Athletic. I know a lot of people like The Athletic, but not everybody uh, is able or wanting to pay for it. If you would want to see some real quality uh, journalism in the sports world and you like it and would enjoy The Athletic, then certainly leave a comment down below. I'd like to comment to say exactly, just so it's easy for for me to sift through it all uh, I would like to comment to say I want the athletic just simple as that leave a comment saying that if you want to comment on anything else in the video please do that separately and then I will sift through take all those comments and I'll use one of the uh, random drawer the things that we can use online here and we'll do a draw and see who will get it? Now, I do want to pause for a moment as well and acknowledge our channel sponsor, Manscaped. Shelf Hockey is proud to be sponsored by Manscaped. Of course, with Manscaped, we have a special offer here for all Top Shelf Hockey viewers where you can get 20% off in free shipping and all orders at Manscaped.com. Now, of course, Manscaped just launched a brand new Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, which is a fantastic product. They've taken the level up here even again with the skin safe replaceable blades uh, they have it's waterproof it's wireless charging uh, has a travel lock on it uh, as well as a nice light so you don't miss what you're doing so certainly a terrific product now many people associate manscape with their trimmers which is certainly uh, kind of their top product but they do have a lot of other great options as well uh, including what they call the weed whacker which is another trimmer for your ears and nose and they have a variety of deodorants and sprays as well which also keep you fresh and are terrific as well so certainly manscape has a lot to offer and we certainly highly recommend all of their products so check out manscape.com and use promo code tsh for 20% off and free shipping. 
Now, getting into the trade rumors here for today, I have a three different things I want to take a look at. Now, first up, I want to reference uh, Dan Krasinski, who is from Pittsburgh Hockey Now, talking about the future of Malkin and Latang in Pittsburgh. Now, of course, as we know, both of these players have had an incredibly pivotal role in all of their success in multiple Stanley Cups and had a tremendous career there, along with Sidney Crosby. Certainly the three that have been there the longest and had so much success. Now, both Malkin and Latang are entering the final year of the contracts. And what Kaczynski is saying is that there, right now there's there's no rush and there seems to be no real pressing need for the Pittsburgh Penguins to get anything done to extend these guys. Obviously, you know, many feel that there's a good chance that they likely both stay, but I think they're taking the patient wait-and-see approach, and we know that they're in a new regime with Ron Hextall and Brian Burke who came in partway through last season. Um, and, you know, obviously ownership's probably going to be involved. You know, Mario's quite partial to some of these guys too. But at the end of the day, I think they're going to want to maybe wait and see how the season goes. Because at this point, uh, Krasinski is saying that uh, a year ago, if he would have been asked, are both these guys going to extend and likely finish their careers in Pittsburgh? He would have said yes. Now he says he's not so sure. Uh, so to me, that's you know, obviously leads to the possibility that one of them could possibly find themselves either move this year if things don't go well, or they could depart via free agency into next offseason if they're not signed. Uh, to me, I think if I had to peg which one was more likely to stay, I would probably say Malkin because I think overall he's accomplished much more as an individual than Latang has. Latang's been a good, solid defenseman. Uh, certainly had some, some down years, a lot of injury years, but has been better the last little while. But you know what? At the same time, they're both going to be looking for a decent amount of money. The Penguins have not really had any amount of playoff success since they won their last Stanley Cup, which was 2017. We're going on four years now. Um, so, you know, the, at some point they have to kind of look to the new, uh, you know, regime, the new guard, if you will, uh, you know, a new era in Pittsburgh. I think Crosby obviously has a little bit more term left on his contract. I don't expect him to be going anywhere, uh, but it is possible one of these two big names in Pittsburgh might be in their final games, their final season with the organization. So I guess based on these thoughts, uh, he does obviously doesn't go on to say for sure that either of them are going to be traded. But when you say that, I'm not so sure that they're not going to be there beyond the season or they might not make it through the season. That certainly you know leads us to think that there could be a trade. So where do you think we're the... So let me know what your thoughts are on the Pittsburgh Penguins. If they don't have a fantastic year and things are not really looking the greatest there, is there a possibility that one of these two guys could be traded? In the case of Malkin, I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. Obviously, he's going to miss the first couple months of the season anyway. Uh, so if anything were to happen, like I said, I think it's more likely that it would be Latang, And I think it would only happen around the deadline that Pittsburgh's not going to make the playoffs uh, and it's looking, you know, like maybe it's time for more change. And personally, I wouldn't be completely shocked if Pittsburgh was not in the playoffs this year. I mean, last year, I honestly thought that might be the year they take a step back. They proved me wrong. But this year, I, I think it's more likely, again, looking at that Metro division, it's pretty tough. I'm not entirely convinced that they're a sure thing to be in the playoffs. Now, taking a look at Calgary and Johnny Gaudreau, recent comments from Frank Saravalli uh, leads us to indicate that Johnny Gaudreau is looking for a pretty hefty contract and, uh, you know, very well might not be getting that in Calgary. Now, uh, Saravalli didn't say that Gaudreau wanted out of Calgary. Uh, he even commented that, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean he wants to leave, but he did indicate he's looking for some really big money. And one problem that the Flames are going to have here is they not only have to decide the future of Gaudreau, but they also have Matthew Kachuk coming up next offseason. Uh, the way his contract was structured that he's in right now, he's going to be making $9 million this year, which means he's due a really hefty qualifying offer this offseason. And as we know, and as we're seeing right now with his brother Brady, the Kachucks drive a hard bargain. They're hardcore negotiators. That is going to be a difficult deal, I think, for Calgary to get done. It's going to take a lot of time and a lot of effort, a lot of money, and they might not be able to keep Kachuk and Gaudreau. And to me, it's a no-brainer which one they would keep if it boils down to it. Uh, I think Johnny Gaudreau is possibly entering his final season in Calgary. At least that's what my opinion is. Now, of course, one other thing to keep in mind as well is Gaudreau has a, a pretty stringent no-trade clause. 
and only has five teams that he can offer Calgary to be traded to if they want to go down that road. So that's why I was really surprised that they didn't do something sooner with Gaudreau. There's no extension in place. They're not talking about contract. There's no word behind the scenes that they're even discussing an extension. Uh, and like I said, and they've made it clear already publicly with the media that the Flames and Gaudreau, neither side will be discussing his contract publicly at all. So... That doesn't sound good. That doesn't give you that warm, fuzzy feeling that there's a good chance Johnny Gaudreau is going to remain in Calgary. Look at it from that perspective, and then when you look at it from the financial perspective and the cap situation, it's going to be complicated, right? So to me, I think there's a pretty good chance that Johnny Gaudreau will be in his final year with Calgary, but a trade will be very, very complicated, and I'm not entirely convinced it happens anytime soon. Again, like I said about Pittsburgh, Gaudreau could be one of those guys that he maybe gets moved to the deadline if the Flames are not looking like they're having a prominent season or going to definitely be a playoff team. And obviously he might be more willing and more flexible at that point to be uh, waiving his no trade for different teams because it would only be on a short-term basis then he'd become a free agent. So we'll see where that goes. But according to Sarah Valley, he's looking for big money and Calgary might not be the place to get them paid. Now, lastly, I want to take a look at the Nashville Predators. Uh, recent interviews with two players kind of give us a very different take on their futures. One was defenseman Matthias Ekholm, while the other being forward Philip Forsberg. Personally, I think Nashville needs more of a rebuild, more of a teardown here, and I don't know that David Poyle is really looking to do that. But according to the interview with Matthias Ekholm, who was rumored at one point to be close to signing an extension. And then it was like, well, hold on. Nashville's not doing so well here. They're likely going to be trading him at the deadline. They got better. Never happened. All that talk about him being one of the top trade pieces. Never materialized. And then it was like, no, they're going to sign him again. And here we are now ready to start the season. He's still not signed. His comment was, I would have liked to have signed yesterday. He's anxious to sign and stay with the Predators, and they have not gotten it done, which tells me that they're likely not completely sold on the idea that they want to do that. So could Matthias Ekholm be another player this year that becomes part of the rumor mill again? I mean, it's hard to say with certainty, but it just makes you wonder where he's not signed here as of yet. When it comes to Philip Forsberg, his comments were quite different, saying he felt that you should play your contract through, and he referenced the fact that he's had a good time in Nashville, but, you know, it's a business. Uh, you know, said all the things that you really can't say too much about. But you know what? Philip Forsberg was one of the people that were quite visibly not happy when they traded Victor Arvidsson. He's coming up on being a free agent here. Uh, he doesn't have the trade protection in his contract like a lot of bigger names do. The Predators would have an easier time trading him. And to me, I do not expect the Predators to be a playoff team. I really honestly think the Predators are going to be near probably the bottom five to seven teams in the NHL this season. So they're going to be trending towards getting a pretty high draft pick, which means that some of these guys would be pretty obvious earlier in the year to be trade deadline acquisitions. And I can see Philip Forsberg and Ekholm both generating a ton of interest. Now, to me, I, I'm not convinced they won't sign Ekholm, but it just seems weird with all the reports we had had before that it's not done yet. And in the case of Forsberg, I wouldn't be shocked at all if he's traded this year for his free agency until the offseason and decides where his future is longer term. But that's what I think. Let me know what your thoughts are based on what these players have had to say. Where do you see these players going? What kind of deals do you think could happen based on what we talked about here today? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. And of course, don't forget to comment regarding the giveaway if you're interested in that. And I will reveal the winner here in the first of next week. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.